But not everything valuable is measurable. In particular, if you're trying to assess risk, you can't just rely on quantified data. It is impossible to have all the right quantified data at the right time. And what's more, it's even more dangerous if you think you can. So I want to tell you a story of up close how I saw a company, uh, what happened when they privileged their quantitative data. So in 2009, I started a research position with Nokia, and I was pretty psyched because I had been using Nokia phones since high school, and I was excited to apply my background in stats and qualitative work for a company that played such a you know, very big part in my life. And at the time, Nokia was the largest cell phone company in emerging markets. And since I had already spent a few years doing qualitative ethnographic research in China, and at the time, China was an emerging market, I dove right in. So I immersed myself in the lives of migrants. I worked as a street vendor selling dumplings to construction workers. And I shopped at secondhand uh, markets, watching people buy used cell phones. And I also slept in internet cafes to watch how people were moving around urban areas and rural areas. And through all this, I had started to gather a lot of empirical evidence for Nokia about how Chinese migrants were using technology. And what I saw was that a big change was coming. The signs were everywhere if you knew where and how to look. Aspirational marketing was everywhere. This is what migrant homes look like, but this is the apartment complex of what the workers were building to the left here, or to your right. And this is what the single bathroom in the temporary migrant housing looked like in the slums. For about a couple hundred people would uh, use this one bathroom. And this is the ads for the high-end toilets that surrounded the slums. There were also millions of advertisements for iPhones promising entry to the high-tech world. And these ads, they really, they really caught my eye because I knew that while the migrants are surrounded by ads for luxury products, the most important product for them was their cell phone. I mean, even when, you, when they moved to the urban city, the first thing they would buy would be a cell phone before they even bought a toothbrush. And I saw many people eagerly switching to affordable Shanzai phones with smartphone-like features. And I realized that even the poorest would want to buy a, a smartphone. This was a luxury product that wasn't even being marketed at them, but for them, it was going to make sense for them to buy. So when I realized this, I was like, okay, my mind is blown, and this is a humongous insight. And I have to tell Nokia. So I was very excited to bring this information back. And I was like, look, guys, uh, your company needs to change its entire business strategy and product development plan. Uh, people are going to soon discard their Symbian phones for smartphones. And uh, well, Nokia didn't really, uh, they, they were just like, that doesn't make sense to us at all. Like, there's no way. And that company wasn't, uh, I mean, it was like, they weren't alone. You know, this is when, remember when Microsoft CEO Steve Ballmer was like, yeah, there's no chance that the iPhone is going to get significant market share. And when he said this, Android had just come out, so smartphones really weren't a thing yet. And a lot of people agreed with him. I mean, he wasn't crazy for that. And Nokia agreed with them too. They didn't find my findings to be very valuable because they were like, look, your sample size of a 100, it's pretty weak and small because our quantitative data of millions of data points, they don't say anything about low-income people wanting to buy smartphones. And I was like, of course it doesn't say that because what I'm looking at is a new trend, a trend that's so new that hasn't even appeared in your quantitative data sets yet. But let's go look for indicators. Let's find proxies of what I'm looking at so we can scale these insights and we can find other quantitative indicators but no, they were just like, it doesn't even make sense. So we all know what happened to Nokia. They couldn't see the cliff coming because they had too much faith in their quantitative data. And it was like they had built the Oracle you know, at Delphi but fired all the temple guides. So remember while the Pythia was rambling, the temple guides were gathering all that really important sticky information, the stuff that's really difficult to quantify. And I call that sticky stuff thick data. Thick data is qualitative but it's complicated and it's super hard to measure. It's not a number, but there's value to it. And data scientists can leverage thick data to quickly check their hypothesis. Thick data can also highlight where the gaps, the missteps are in your quantitative processes. Thick data could have given Nokia a competitive advantage, but it, instead it ended up being a key contributor to their eventual downfall.